Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Who's going to be the first one to join me today? Usually it's either um, Nolan or Bryson and Kendall. So let's see who's it going to be today. I'm anxious to find out. And how is everyone? Second week of summer break. How's it going? Oh, it's Zoe. Hi, Zoe. I was just saying that the first one is usually Nolan or Kendall, but it was you, your superpower coming from Miss Spencer's class. How's summer going for you, lady? Jazz. Hi, Jazz and Devon. Devon, I didn't see you last week um, during the video, but I saw you made it to fourth grade. Hey, 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 hey. Good job, sir. I miss you too, my Jazz. How's summer going? And your sister, I forget her name. Is your sister watching? Hi, Aya. How are you? And Sarah, is she watching? How's summer going for everybody? Great ones, my great ones. Kendall coming up um, to me next year. And Bryson, who's leaving me. How's it going? How's everything going? Oh, you're in summer school? That's cool. You want to keep those skills going on, Mr. Devon? Now, what's your sister's name? Talking to you, my jazz. What's your sister's name? And how's summer going? I think I asked you guys that um, last week, and I don't think anybody told me how summer's going. With well, Devon, you just told me you're in summer school. Oh, it's going good, going good. What have you guys been doing? What is good? What does that even mean? I don't know what good means. You have to give me some details. Has anybody traveled? Have you been playing outside? Or does good mean that you're doing um, Roblox and... Uh, uh, gosh, what's the game that Nolan always plays? And I can't remember. Oh, Jaya and Jocelyn. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad that you guys are here. As you know, I always want to wait a little bit to give others some time to join. And I've got on my Mickey Mouse. <laughs> So I do have a funny book. Um, you know, I always like to ask with predictions, what type of book do you guys think I might be reading? I say it's a funny book. And you're going to be able to make connections. That's all I'm going to give you. You're going to be able to make text-to-text -text connections from books that I read to you or books you've heard. Like, even though, Zoe, you were not in my class, I guarantee you, you're going to be able to make a text-to-text -text connection to the book that I'm reading. At least you'd probably be able to make two, but definitely one um, text to text. Hi, Sophia. I work with your mom. Thank you for joining me. Summer's going good. So, so far that I said, I'm going to read a funny book tonight. And it's going to be a book where everyone here, I'm pretty sure, will be able to, to make text to text connections. And you probably are going to hear a song in your head as I start reading the book. But let me see what time. I'll wait about another minute before I go ahead and get started. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> I'm saying hi to you. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> a horse book. Aya is not a horse book, but I promise I am going to get a horse book just for you. I promise. Promise. Before the summer is over, I will have a horse book and I'm going to say, Aya, this is for you. I promise. Because you keep on saying, Miss Jeremy, I want a horse book. And you've been saying that all year from the time that you joined my class because you were one of my new ones. Any other predictions, guys? I said you're going to be able to make text-to-text -text connections. And for those who may not know what that means, that means that the book that I'm reading reminds you of a book that you've already heard before. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be a song that comes to mind as well. Well, I'm glad you're good, Sarah. And I'll see you tomorrow. Is Lil watching? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I know people will come in later as I get a chance to when people will watch this. If you guys have anybody that you know of that you know could benefit for this, go ahead and share this. Tell them to like the page, share it. And the book that I'm going to read tonight, it's actually a book from Miss Spencer. So Zoe, this came from your teacher. It's called Piggy Pie. And as you look, 
kind of person is this with this i'm sorry it's reversed with this mole bump and the hat that's on her head piggy pie by margie palatini illustrated by howard fine and like i said in here i want you to make connections you can make connections to yourself if you can think of something text to text connection i don't know if you're going to be able to make a text to world connection but you might be able to always whenever you're reading you should visualize and that means that you think about either how something a character is going to make you feel what would it feel like what would it smell like what would it taste like what would it sound like or maybe where you visualize what the character is actually going to how does this character feel right now how would i feel if i were in that situation and if you guys have anything that you would like to add please go ahead and do i don't want this just to be about me i want us to interact and is this a fiction or a non-fiction book well looking at it right here just looking at the pictures what do you think and what do you think this is going to be about if it says piggy pie i don't like predictions just what you think about what's going to happen i need some predictions here what's the setting the setting is where the story takes place looking right here what is this setting? Pigs in the mud, a barn. What's the setting? I'm looking for your answers. But this is actually fiction because fiction means fake. Nonfiction means not fake. And this is going to be a fake book. This glare. Looking at this picture, what time of day is it? What's happening here? Give me some predictions. Looking at this, and you look very carefully there. You can see the sun. This is dawn. I visualize what it's like when I wake up in the morning, and when I wake up in the morning, the sun shines right through the window on me, so I might wake up like her, like, oh. But I like getting up in the morning. What about you? How many of you are morning people? Or when you get up in the morning, you're like, woo -ha! And how many of you are like, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh. No, I need a few more minutes. Farm, morning waking up. Oh, now Sarah's watching. Hi, Sarah. Yep, it looks like a farmhouse. So it says, I don't want to turn off that light, but that glare. Let me see if I can make it a little bit better. I might have to go to a different part. That's better. All right. People in my classroom, this is kind of like when I, um, uh, I'm afraid to turn this off because then the camera's going to start moving slower. That might work like that. Sorry. Grinch the Witch woke up grouchy, grumpy, and very hungry. Her belly grumbled for something delicious, something delightful, something special. But what? What might you wake up wanting to eat? Do you think this witch is going to eat the same types of food that we eat? I've got a clue. Piggy pie. It wasn't purple mouse tail stew. How many of you want to eat that? No, she ate that yesterday for lunch. Maybe some mashed dragon tongue pudding. Who wants that? Nope. Gritch wasn't in the mood for anything quite that sweet. Perhaps a taste of boiled black buzzard feet. That's always made her mouth water. I want you guys to visualize something that will make your mouth water. What is something that if I told you I was going to give it to you right now, it would make your mouth water? Is this something that you guys need to do to help you with understanding books that you're reading? Something that will make my mouth water, since I'm from Chicago, will be a deep dish pizza from Chicago. I could see picking it up and the cheese just oozing. <sighs> Maybe I need to make a trip. No, not today. Today, Grinch wanted something truly tasty, something really yummy, something special. And that could only mean piggy pie. Yes, 
yes, yes, piggy pie. I can taste those plump, juicy pink piggies right now, Gritch said, smacking her lips. She hurried to the pantry and pulled out her old hat cookbook from the top shelf. So the setting, where is she? What's the setting on this page? I see an oven. I see some critters. Oh, I think I see her ingredients. Things in her pantry. Where is she right now? She picked off a spider, blew off the dust, and turned to the secret recipe on page 342. Gritch ran her bony finger with the long green nail down the list of ingredients. Ugh, she's got green nails. One eye a fly. But well, look. Do you see anything that says eye a fly? Can you guys see that? Let me see. Eye of fly. It is right here. Eye of fly. She checked the pantry shelves. No problem, Rich, said Rich. Two shakes of rattlesnakes rattle. Let's see if we can find that. That's right up there. The glare. It's right here. And I don't think you guys can see it. I'm sorry. Next week I won't have the glare, I promise. I'll just keep going. No problem, said Gritch. Two belly hair hairs of possum. No problem, said Gritch. Eight plump piggies. Do you guys think she has piggies in this kitchen? Do you think she has piggies? I should have said thumbs up if you think she has piggies and thumbs down if you think she does not have piggies. Problem! Screech. Rich, I don't have any piggies. How can I make piggy pie without even one punky pink pig? Gretch pulled her hair. She's really upset. She stomped her feet. She paced the floor. She wanted piggy pie. She wanted piggy pie very much. Hmm, she said, tapping the lucky wart on her chin. Now, where would I find eight plump piggies? What do you guys think? Where can she go? She's really frustrated. So, so, so frustrated. Where can she go? to find eight plump piggies. <laughs> Looking at some of your comments. Oh, Carson, hi. Where did she go? What's that a picture of? Can you guys see it? What is this a picture of? Where is she? Gritch thought and thought and thought. Aha! She shouted with the jump. The circus! Did you guys say circus? The circus! No, no, not the circus. You don't find pigs in the circus. She thought harder. Where is this? The zoo! Yes, yes, the zoo! The zoo! No, no, not the zoo. You don't find pigs in the zoo. She thought much harder. What did she finally think of? Which is a place where you actually can find them. What did she finally think of? Where is that? The farm! Yes, yes, the farm! You find pigs on the farm. There was still just one teeny tiny little problem. Where do you find a farm? Where else? Gritch let her phone, bony fingers to the 
do the walking and open the yellow pages to F, where she found a very large ad. There it was. Now, for you guys, you don't really use the yellow pages. Where would you go? What would you use if you needed to know where a farm was? When I was growing up, we would use the yellow pages. And that was a book that had everything listed in it in ABC order, kind of like a dictionary, but it would tell you where things were and give you the phone numbers. What would you look if you needed to know where something is and find its phone number? You would use Google, the internet. And here, yellow pages. And what's the name of the farm she's going to? Oh, look at those green nails. What's the name of the farm? Do you hear the song in your head? I do. Oh, McDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Anybody else hear it? So, just over the river and through the woods, we have ducks, chickens, and piggies. And what is she looking for? So, What's going to happen? She's going to go to the farm. How will she get there? What's a witch's mode of transportation? Did you say this? If so, you were right. She's flying. It looks like she's at the farm or over the farm. And what does she write? Kind of like if she were an airplane. Surrender, piggies! Gritch put on her broom. I'm sorry. Gritch put her broomstick in gear and headed over the river and through the woods to Old McDonald's farm. Every time I say that, I hear the song in my head. I've got you in my sights now, you little porkers! She cackled <laughs> as she circled overhead. How do the pigs feel? And how does Gritch feel? Do you think she's going to be able to go down there and get those piggies really easy? Do you think she's just going to go down there and get her eight pigs and be able to go back with them? Thumbs up if yes. Thumbs down if no. Hi, Donna. What are the piggies doing? What's happening here? Can you guys tell what's happening? It looks like it's cow clothes in this picture and in this one. Let's see. What are they doing? Putting on beaks and oh my goodness. What are they doing? This one right here, putting on a bill, and it looks like a duck's face. And this one, what is, oh, look at that. I think they're dressing up like the other animals on the farm. What do you guys think? She's off her broom. It looks like her feet are on fire. What would cause that to happen? You think maybe she stopped with her feet? Gritch zoomed in for a thump, thump, urge landing. She spit straw, fanned her still flaming tootsies, and lifted her goggles. There wasn't a pig in sight. Where did they all go? Gritch shouted to a duck. Hey, duck! I said, where are all the piggies? I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. The duck, wah, wah, wah. the duck quacked, quacked here. It quacked, quacked there. It quacked, here it quacked, there it quacked. Everywhere, it quacked, quacked. No piggies. Does that remind anybody of something? There she is. Some of them are actual ducks, but some of them are piggies. She doesn't realize it. It's working. What animal do you think she's going to go to next?
predictions. Still quacking with the ducks. What do you mean, no piggies, you dizzy duck? She's not too kind. Grinch screeched into his bill. I just saw a passel of piggies down here not a minute ago. Hand over those hogs, you quacker. No piggies, quacked the duck. Rich pulled her hair. She stumped her feet. She even threatened the duck with one of her most evil spells. The duck was not impressed. It wasn't even scared. It gave Rich another quack and waddled away. Give me another word for waddled. Instead of saying the duck waddled away, what can you say instead of waddled? The duck walked away. So... Who needs a dumb duck? Rich mumbled. So now, which animal do you think we might see next? I'm sorry. Anybody say cow? Are they going to be able to trick her with the, this costume? Being careful where she stepped. You think she's being careful where she steps? Gritch wandered across the meadow. Achoo! She shouted. Mm. Mm. Gritch said to the cow, Where are the piggies? I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. The cow moo mooed here, it moo mooed there, here it moved, there it moved. Everywhere it moo moo. No piggies. Look at those teeth. That's a pretty impressive looking cow there, guys. What do you think? What do you mean, no piggies, you lumpy looking cow? Green Gritch, I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. Fuck over the pork, you walking milk machine, or I'll curdle your cream. No piggies. Mm. Moved the cow. Gritch pulled her hair. She stomped her feet. She even threatened the cow with one of the, her most evil spells. The cow stared at Gritch, swatted a fly with what? What part of its body is it going to swat the fly with? with this tail and lumbered away. Lumbered away. Do you think lumbered away means that it walked quickly or slowly? Adults, a lot of times during tests, the children will be asked to use another word, like instead of saying the cow lumbered away, they would need to say something like the cow walked slowly away. Cows, who needs them? Rich mummered. So, what animal did we see first? What animal did she go to first asking for piggies? Ducks. And then what animal did she go to? A cow. So what's the next animal she's going to go to? What other animal did we see the uh, pigs dressing into when they were in the barn? Looking at some of your answers. Chi Chi, hi Chi Chi. Did you say chicken? <laughs> That's what I heard in my head. That's what I visualized the chicken. So she tried the barnyard where she stopped a chicken in its tracks. Okay, bird brain, where are the piggies? I need eight plump piggies for, you guys say it, piggy pie. The chicken, cluck, cluck here. It, what's the rest? Cluck, cluck there. Here it clucked. There it clucked. Everywhere it cluck, cluck. No piggies. She must not be the wisest. Because if she looks very carefully, she can tell it's a pig. I mean, look at its face. Ha! 
how do you think Gritch feels? She's trying really hard to find these pigs. First thing she did was she said she was going to look where? Do you guys remember? First she said she was going to go to the, the circus. And then what did she say? Let me go back and find that answer. Whenever you're not sure, or even if you are sure, just to check, always go back and find your answers. So, oh, this is what she said, problem right here. First she thought about the circus. Then she thought about the zoo. And when she thought about the farm and she had another problem, she didn't know where it was, she used the yellow pages. And now that she's on the farm, she's still having more problems. She can't find those pigs. How would you feel if this were you? And what would you do? What would you do now if you could not find what you wanted? Couldn't find a pig. Is she going to give up? Maybe she figured it out. Look at that little curly tail back there. What do you mean, no pig is your feather drumstick? Oh, yeah, she's pretty mean. Great, great. What's going on here? Where's the boss of this heap of hay? The chicken flapped the wing towards, what's the farmer's name? Old MacDonald. Every time we do that, I hear that song. Oh, MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And I guess he doesn't have any pigs, according to Gritch. Here's the farmer. Let's look at this farmer very, very closely. Is that old McDonald? Well, right here, see a pink tail. Here, I see the ears that belong to the pig. Here, yeah. They're still tricking her, and she hasn't realized it yet. Gritch looked him over twice. Maybe she's going to figure it out. What do you think? Thumbs up if she's going to figure out that she's been tricked the whole time. Thumbs down if she's not. You're old McDonald's, she, McDonald's, she said? You don't look like your picture, do you? The farmer thumbed his suspenders and shrugged. Look, shorty, I've been quack quack here, moo mooed there and cluck clucked everywhere all over this farm. I need eight plump piggies for, you guys say it, piggy pie. Where are the piggies? The farmer looked here. What's next? He looked there. Here he looked, there he looked, everywhere he looked, look, but what? No piggies. And definitely, she should be able to tell that's a pig. She looks pretty upset. What do you mean no piggies, you flea-bitten seed spreader? You must have piggies. Rich pulled her hair. What else did she do after she pulled her hair? What else? What's been the pattern? She stumped her feet. And then what else? What's the pattern? She even threatened him with one of her most evil spares. No piggies! Her stomach growled. It grumbled, but there were no piggies. There would be no piggy pie. Now what is she going to eat? She still got a problem. She woke up really, really hungry. She still got a problem. What should she do? What should she do, guys? Look who she meets. What story does this remind you of? And look at him. He's all beat up. His arm is in a sling. His head is bandaged up. What story is this reminding you of? And why does he look like this? Psst. 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 Excuse me, little lady. Woof's the name. Let me give you some advice. What do you think he's going to tell her? 
Forget about the pigs. Forget about the pigs, said Gritch, eyeing the wolf. He nodded. They're too tricky, trust me. I've been chasing three little pigs for days. He huffed. He puffed. I'm starving. Look at me. I'm nothing but skin and bones. Did you guys say the three little pigs? And the big bad wolf? I hear the song. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? The big bad wolf? The big bad wolf? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? La, 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 la. If you've ever been in my class, I read that book and sang that song to you. Gritch pinched his arm. Trying to get out away from the glare. Well, not quite, she grinned. Why do you think she's grinning? Mr. Wolf, I have the most wonderful idea. I was thinking, since you haven't eaten and I haven't eaten, why don't you come home with me for lunch? I'm a very good cook. Why, that does sound tempting, the wolf said, as he looked at Gritch and smacked his lips. <coughs> What's each of them thinking, guys? What do you think? What's going on here? Why did he smack his lips? Why does she grin at him? Are you sure it wouldn't be any problem? Problem? Rich grinned. So, she's visual, he's visualizing eating her. That's his witch sandwich. And she's visualizing having a wolf sandwich. Wonder who's gonna win. No problem at all, she said as they walked arm in arm. I always enjoy having a wolf for lunch. That's the end. We don't know what happens to them. So, in this book, you guys were able to make some connections. You should have been able to make a connection to um the three little pigs and the big bad wolf and definitely to the song old mcdonald because it kept going on and on and on and on with that so i hope you guys like that book and from this book i think about the pigs and when they had a dangerous situation they could have been afraid let me go to that page right here they were afraid and she was over here overhead and it says, surrender piggies, who are afraid? But did they let that fear overcome them? They did not. Eleanor Roosevelt said, do one thing every day that scares you. And I like what the pigs did. They came up with a plan. And in their plan, they said, we're not gonna just be afraid and let that overcome us. We're gonna figure out a way to do something while they were afraid. And I'm sure at first, when they went out here to face this witch who wanted to eat them, I guess if I stay here, then it won't be a glare, glare. I'm sure when they first went out there to talk to her, they were a bit afraid, maybe afraid that she was going to figure out who they were, but they did it anyway. And for my great ones that were in my mm -hmm. class this year, you know that we have seen some people that did some things that I'm sure they were afraid to do, but it was something that they really, really wanted to do. And so they did it anyway. One person that comes to mind is Diana Nyad. Somebody, who is Diana Nyad? What do you remember? What do you remember? Who is she? She's the lady who swam from, the first lady who swam from Cuba all the way to Florida uh, without getting out of the water. She attempted to do it the first time she was in her 20s. And then she successfully was able to do it when she was in her 50s. So she had to figure out, just like the pigs had to figure out, well, we're afraid, uh, what can we do? She had to figure out what she could do in order to make a success. And another person, and I don't know if this will be doing it afraid, but um, Roger Bannister, who's he? Who's he? Your comments, I know it's a little bit slower, but who is he? 
He is the guy who broke the four minute mile. Scientists and doctors had said that it was impossible for a human being to run a mile in less than four minutes. And Roger Bannister had completed and competed in a race and I believe he competed it in a little bit over four minutes. So he said, well, if I can do it in just a little bit over four minutes, then I know that I couldn't do it in other four minutes, in under four minutes. And he was the first one to do it and since then, Many, many, many other people have done that. So what is the special thing that is in you that you might be a little bit afraid to do it, that you need to do it, and you need to offer to the world? Because if you don't give it to us, then we will suffer. What is that thing that's in you that you have to do, even if you're afraid, that you have to be bold and take the courage to do it? Whatever it is, find the strength within to do it. So... Thank you guys for joining me this Tuesday. Please share this page with your friends and families and anyone else who can use some um, reading adventures in their life, whether it be just for the enjoyment of reading or to be able to gain some knowledge on comprehension skills or motivational tips because I like to include those. Please share this page with people that you might know. Thank you so much for joining me again this Tuesday. And of course, I have to end the way I always do. I want you to think of one thing that you are happy about. Something that if you were to read it at another time, it would immediately lift you up. And I would like for you to either lock it in your head. My students, when they have a hard time learning something and they finally do, I'll grab their heads and I'll say, lock it in, lock it in. And I even think I did it to myself when one of them said something to me um, towards the end of the school year. So something that will make you happy because you're going to have some sad times. And I even had one of my students and I gave her a little notebook and I told her that for her to write things in there that will make her happy so that if someone upset her, she would go and read it. And she said that she would use it. So write it down, write it down here, write it down in a book. Then I want you to think of one thing that you did that you are proud of, not something that someone else did, something that you did so that you can read it or look at yourself in the mirror and said, say whatever your name is, Keisha. That's my name. I am proud of you for and fill that in. So you've got written it down. Think of the thing that you are happy about. Think of the thing that you did that you are proud of. Get it in your head. Lock it in your head. Lock it in your head. Head. Inhale. Exhale. Smile. You're beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. Make a great day.